Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rox and I'm coming to you today with a review for uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 6, Episode 18. I'm feeling a little bit better, not quite at 100%, but considerably better than last week. Um, yeah, last week was just crazy, you guys. I coughed and coughed coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed I couldn't take it and uh, you guys were all very nice to leave me you know all types of suggestions listen I don't want nobody to leave me any more suggestions this week you guys had me running around like a fucking chicken with his head cut off trying to get all this shit let me see I had onion garlic green tea apple cider vinegar oregano I was like fuck if somebody told me to get some damn lettuce I'd have had a fucking salad shit <laughs> so who'd have known that you put all these natural ass remedies together and the shit is supposed to cure you yeah I, I'm just that's okay I am definitely a believer in modern medicine I, I was fine with the epidural when I had Joe, I uh, didn't have time to get one with Jada, but yeah, give me the, all the medication you can, okay? Ain't for all these fucking natural remedies. My mom was a natural remedies person. She had a book at the house, and you know, she's over there rubbing damn WD-40 on her fucking knees and pinching her fingers when she got a headache and all that. Listen, give me the fucking Tylenol, all right? I took my ass to the damn doctor. I was like, Doc, give me some albuterol. <sighs> Take that, take that, take that. Like I said, not quite at 100, but yeah, we, we doing a whole lot better, okay? So anyway, as far as Real Housewives of Atlanta, still wasn't what I thought was going to happen on the episode, but we finally get into the meat of the damn trip. Um, let's get to it, shall we? The show started um, the day after where it ended last week, which was when um, the dinner happened, you know, last week where Peter and uh, Ken Kenya basically cornered that damn Porsche about her Cordell statements. I didn't even realize that Lawrence was at that dinner the night before, did you guys? Anyways, it's breakfast the next day and Kenya and um, Lawrence meet for breakfast to sit and, you know, talk. They both thought that it was funny that Portia kind of admitted that she was a trophy wife to Cordell and, you know, when she married him that he was a tainted celebrity. Remember, that's what she said. She was there to make everybody forget about all that stuff you know give him a better image so yeah that's that's sort of kind of like what a beard is even though she didn't put it in those words so I guess that's not what Portia meant and side note speaking of Portia how many of you guys rushed out and bought uh, Portia's new single that was released today called flat flatline it is on iTunes and um, at last check it was number 10 on the R&B charts for the United States, and it was on number 24, I think it was 23 or 24, for the UK charts. Funny about the UK charts, she is nestled firmly in between Luther Vandross's um, Dances with My Father and um, Alicia Keys' Empire State of Mind. So yeah, that's the competition that she's up against. <laughs> <laughs> no shade at all. Congratulations to uh, Portia. You know, I am all for women trying to make their own money. And damn it, Portia do need some money. Evidently, she was not left any in the divorce settlement. Um, Cordell was able to keep everything that Cordell came into the marriage with. And Portia was able to keep everything that Portia came into the marriage with, which was the damn Mercedes Benz. <laughs> That's it. I was just like, well, damn, Cordell. I mean, you could even give her a salary. I mean, they were married for like 22 months. I mean, he couldn't give her two years' salary of what she lost on this marriage. He was like, fuck it, you take that ring, pawn that shit, whatever you can get with that engagement ring, that's it. Because that's all she was able to keep was the engagement ring. I think he paid her lawyer fees and um, her Mercedes Benz. So, y'all going out and get to this flat line. I listen to it. It's not bad. Um, just... You know, R&B music is just n nothing exciting these days. and um, But, you know, it's definitely a, a, a very good effort. And the girl can sing. I didn't expect her to be putting out no albums or nothing. But, hey, you know, shit. Bitch went and did it. Okay? Also, should probably tell you guys that, you know, we had rumors going around last week that she was dating some African dictator's son and folks was all going crazy about it and was just like oh she didn't land at her a man you know she was posting pictures of Bentley's and all these gifts and all this stuff then old Tamla Jones came out and was like bitch now you know good damn well that you not dating that African dictator's son I'm dating the African dictator's son and you guys know who Tamla Jones is Tamla Jones is baby D's 
big little sister, you know, the one who was Day Day's ex-girlfriend, um, who was pregnant <laughs> in uh, next Friday. Yeah, Tamla Man was just like, um, did I say Tamla Man? <laughs> Tamla Jones. <laughs> Tamla Jones was like, bitch, you better come on up off of that one. You know that ain't your man. So Portia finally came out and said, no, she's not dating no African dictator. The only thing she's promoting is her her uh, song, Flatline, okay? And it's saying that the truth will be revealed. So that's that's her little hashtag after. Okay, y'all go get it, okay? Anyways, back to the show, you guys. Can y'all also get some started on, you know, some shit that we are so tired of hearing about, which is, you know, sitting down and talking to Apollo about... All this shit that happened with Kenya and Apollo, okay? We are so fucking over it. Only reason why we still have to be dealing with it is because she keeps on bringing the shit up, okay? But, yeah, she feels like it's time for her and Apollo to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Whatever. She says she don't want her name trashed and she don't have no say about it. Okay, child, I guess. So they meet up the next day, and Kenya has a sightseeing excursion planned for everybody. You know, it's monkeys and snakes and shit, everyday side note. Why was Portia crying when she saw the fucking snake? Now listen, I am scared of snakes and everything like that. Definitely I would have screamed. I probably would have jumped. I probably would not have wanted to walk by the, by the damn snake. But what the fuck is we crying for, Portia? I don't mess with snakes like that. Neither does anybody else, Portia. Somebody get her. So they get to the caves, and by all accounts, the caves are beautiful, okay? Um, Kenya said that they are sexy. When they're going down the stairs uh, to the caves, and Kenya was just like, Ooh, how many of you guys want to take off all your clothes and go swimming? And somebody was like, you. <laughs> shit. Everybody know you're the only one who want to do all this shit, Kenya. That bitch couldn't get her clothes off fast enough. So her and Apollo. I was like, fuck, Apollo had his shirt off before everybody else. He was just like, oh thought you was gonna get in the pool i'm gonna get in the pool if you get in the pool he tried to tell phaedra i was like nigga you know you had that shirt off pronto phaedra was like ain't no way that this bitch is fixing to get into this water with my man without me okay so you know phaedra takes off her little thing to it but you know oddly enough she got on a, a little yellow bikini the same as uh kenya except kenya's is you know kenya's fucking like a like a goddamn rock i mean she had titties look like rocks and her ass look like rocks and she just real hard looking. I mean, ain't no shade. You know, Phaedra's not in bad shape or nothing, but you couldn't help but compare the two. They both had on the little yellow bikinis all just like, oh. Kenya gets in the water and she says it's wonderful. You know, it's supposed to be the fountain of youth. Then we get Phaedra and Apollo that get into the water. And then Candy, you know, she's kind of supporting her girl Phaedra. And then Portia, you know, Portia just decides to go on and take a leap and get in the water too. So they all in the water. They look like they having a good time and everything. Cynthia's over there you know real you know upset she's having that discussion that all black women have with themselves when they see everybody in the pool okay is whether or not you want to get in that motherfucker and fuck up your hair <laughs> just like yeah i kind of want to get in the pool but you know she was thinking at the back of her mind like this hair gonna be fucked up if i get in this water so yeah cynthia don't get in then when it was over you guys and everybody was getting out the pool and taking pictures and everything and and uh, you know getting dressed to go back up the stairs did you guys also notice how when apollo was on them stairs and uh kenya came her ass up them stairs and was just like oh we had a great time the water was so nice it was so lovely and she just walked by him apollo couldn't help himself but turn his head and look up the stairs at her but when she was walking up the stairs i was like apollo now god damn it nigga you knew you was not supposed to turn your ass around i was just like oh why'd you do it and you know that cameraman knew for a fact that he was gonna do it that's why the cameraman kept this shit trained on apollo because he knew eventually apollo was gonna go and he did kenya still got this negro in the palm of her hands okay when you walk by and they turn and watch you go oh yeah she got his number for real the only thing that, you know, makes Kenya halfway human to the rest of us viewers is the fact that she's trying to have a baby. It's Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm sure that the majority of their viewers are women. And women can always kind of relate to another woman who are having issues, you know, fertility, fertility issues or whatever. <clears throat> so... They play this up for Kenya, this storyline. Kenya invites everybody who she says supported her in her mission to become pregnant out for a, a little excursion. They're going on a walk. They go see Francisco the Shaman, you guys. And look, I ain't for a whole bunch of this whole hoodoo, voodoo, hoodoo shit that they got going on. But you know what? Whatever works for you, baby. Okay, so yeah, they go and there's a whole bunch of singing and chanting and hitting bitches in chest with 
bundles of parsley and wild boar horns and steamed water and all this shit. Yeah, I guess if that's what they say it's gonna be. I told y'all I ain't into all these natural remedies and shit, bitch. Give me some fucking modern medicine. But can you say that she feeling something moving in her old decrepit ass ovaries or whatever? Listen, if that's <laughs> if that's what she feeling, fine, baby girl, do you. She feeling something deep within her spirit and I was just like, ooh, all uh, y'all black sisters out there who is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost is not gonna like this part of the show. <laughs> I was with Cynthia when Cynthia was just like, now this ain't gonna make all of us pregnant, is it? Because, uh, you know, all of them there pretty much was too old to be having some more kids. Well, Candy, even Candy, Candy is somewhere around 40. And really, 40 is really got to be t is the total limit to be having some new babies, if you ask me. But, you know, who am I? Y'all out there want to have babies over 40 gone right ahead. I'm just saying for me. And afterwards, they sit down and they bund, as Nene would say. And uh, they talk about, you know, experiences as mothers. Kenya is particularly, I can never say particularly, like uh, Tavis Smiley. He says particularly, um, particularly just don't want to come out right she is quite interested in the fact that these women all had kids before they were married they were single mothers and uh, candy was just like if i could have done things differently i would have riley has missed out on so many things like having a father in the house and a daddy's girl which you know i can understand i mean you know i guess you would definitely want your child to be raised in a nuclear family but it doesn't always work out that way it was the cool kenya like Candy said, this was the Kenya that, you know, they wish that they could get all the time instead of the crazy-ass Kenya that they get most of the time. Well, the fact of the matter is, we don't watch the show because we want cool Kenya, okay? We tune in for the antics of the crazy Kenya, so that's the one that we get most of the time. So the men are going to go out, get some cigars, kick back at the, you know, at the bar, and relax without the women, okay? While they're down at the bar, Peter, who I have to say has that fucking peach grip so tightly in his hands, he probably squeezing the fucking juice out of it. <laughs> and Peter said, God damn it, you gonna put me and my wife on this show next season. Peter brings up the trouble in Todd and Candy's life right now you know the shit that's going on with Joyce because you guys remember earlier in the show when they were in the buses Apollo was not in the same bus that um Peter Cynthia and uh, Candy and Todd were in and did you guys notice that Todd had to finally put his foot down and was just like listen baby I am here for you I'm with you 100% of the way okay if we gonna do this we gonna do this okay but um if you not gonna really take care of what needs to be done okay and if you keep on thinking that shit is just gonna work out on its own then uh you know i might have to bounce you know candy that was some shit that candy ain't want to hear that one lip go down like <laughs> candy was just like i can't make my mom go to therapy i was just like no i know you can't make her go to therapy but you know you can go to therapy and and just kind of work on you and I think he was really just trying to let her know that, listen, if you're going to do it, I'm with you 100%. But if you ain't serious about this shit, then I can get unserious about it real quick, okay? So, I, I just really like Todd because Todd, to me, is just a normal, regular dude, a good guy, even though people keep on saying they don't see it in him. I just don't understand why. So, yeah, definitely you can't make your mom do anything pink candy, but you need to really make sure you understand what's important here, okay? That and the fact that don't nobody want no damn smug ass Peter giving them any type of advice on their relationship, okay? So don't give Peter the license to even do it, okay? Fix your shit. But anyway, they are down there and um, Peter is bringing Apollo up to speed on what's going on with Todd and Candy and Joyce. And then, who should walk in but Trouble, okay? We spell Trouble K-E-N-Y-A around these parts. Kenya and Lawrence walk in and um, right away, you can see the little glimmer. The sparkle of hope in Apollo's eye. He is excited to fucking see her, okay? Kenya is just a cheesing that she didn't caught the boys down there without they women's. And I've told you guys plenty of times that Kenya is the good time girl, okay? She likes to have a good time. You know, she laughs. She's cute. She, You know, she knows how to throw herself around. Trust me, I know how to flirt with some fucking men. Comes in there, it's sort of like a whirlwind. She's ordering rounds of shots, okay, of tequila. Tequila, like me and my girlfriends call it. Tequila has had us acting plenty of food plenty of damn times you guys I, I can't even tell you you already know how this shit is fixing to go okay they tossing them back 
one by one and um eventually you know everybody's kind of laughing more it's kind of giggling more you kind of see folks is loosening up a little bit more and I'm, and I'm sure lips are getting loosened as well okay kenya's just like i'm gonna go get some more you know apollo come with me and pick out some more um tequila tequila and i was just like the fuck you need somebody to help you pick out some tequila for i'm fixing to tell you what it is you got cuervo 1800 or Patron. That's all black people drink. Okay, so that we don't need you to go pick out nothing, Apollo. Peter and them was like, no, Apollo, do not go over there. It's a trap. Keep your ass right here. Don't go over there. Okay, they was really trying to go, trying to, you know, keep Apollo. But Apollo was, you guys, I'm telling you what, that little devil was sitting on his shoulder right here. And it was just like, go over there, Apollo. The devil ain't even really had to tell Apollo too much because Apollo already had made it up in his mind that he was going to get with Kenya at one point in that night. So what do Apollo do? He go carry his ass off to the side of the room with Kenya, okay? Todd goes with him originally, and I was just like, listen, I am here for you. You my homeboy. I'm here. I'm not leaving ever unless you tell me to leave. And you know what? Apollo was just like, yeah, go on and leave. I got this, okay? So yeah, now y'all already know that he don't need to be sitting over there with no damn Kenya. Them two get to talking and uh, you know kenya is just trying to point out the fact that you know he did her dirty and you know of course apollo's comeback is always like well you did me dirty as well you threw the first punch you know you was hitting below the belt i don't give a fuck about none of that everybody was pissed about kenya taking him over to the side like that but listen let me tell you guys something it is fucking apollo's problem because apollo is a married one apollo is the one with the commitment we already know that kenya is trouble okay why the fuck are you sitting your ass over there talking to kenya you already know how this shit is gonna turn out but you know Apollo cannot, he doesn't care. You know, the fact that he does shit like this over and over, you can't, you just can't be that stupid, okay? Eventually, it's just, you don't give a fuck. This shit has been asked and answered. It is absolutely no need for us to keep on discussing this, okay? We have moved on from this shit. And again, he played right into Kenya's hands because she knew that it would make him look thirsty, and it did. And we all know that Kenya ain't been nothing but a fucking pain in the pussy to Phaedra ever since the bitch pretty much came on the show. So, you know, it was just like, oh my God. Apollo, you are such an idiot. That's all I kept saying is it's like he's so stupid. If you don't go sit your motherfucking ass back over there with Peter and Todd, but you know that shit don't happen, you guys. So what you know what does happen is in walks Candy and Phaedra. And I'm sure that Todd has sent Candy a damn text like get y'all asses down here right now because some shit is fixing to go down with Kenya and Apollo. When Phaedra walk her ass in there, she look over there like what this dumb motherfucker doing over there now? Okay, this is exactly why I didn't want to bring his stupid ass in the first fucking place. And she walks over there and was just like, what's going on over here? And, you know, that's kind of how the show ends. Well, the show didn't really end like that. The show ended with that stupid-ass Apollo look on his face like, oh, shit, here we go again. Yeah, Apollo, here we go again. You are so stupid. We can't take you anywhere. Oh, that's it. Um... I am definitely going to do Basketball Wives tonight. You know, I've got to get back on track with my videos this week. Last week was just a bust. Still trying to get this voice together. Oh, my God. It was rough getting through this video. I didn't cough, really, but I still kind of have a little bit of a little tickle and a, a little, um, you know, a little tickle and a little slight feeling of a strangle but anyway i'm all right y'all i'm telling you i'm getting better it's all good you guys remember to rate comment and subscribe to the channel Amis rocks the channel is forest rocks everything else i do will be in the bottom bar all right all right so i hope that you guys have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day and i plan on doing the same until next time rock stars bye